What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are actually heading over right now to Venturi. It's a Formula E team. They are a Formula E team based here in Monaco. One of the drivers is actually a good friend of mine and they asked me to just come over and see their headquarters, see they have a simulator I think that's why I'm not too sure what to expect. But we're going to head over to the Venturi headquarters so it should be pretty cool and I thought I'd bring you as a POV video. BMW store, BMW store, c'est vers là quelque part. C'est là. Ah, je peux la laisser là, je pense. Hello. That was one of like the huge missions for Venturi with the Prince Albert Foundation was oh, yeah. to create this like first ever sustainable Arctic exploration vehicle. Wow, that is sick. Yeah, it's so cool, isn't it? This, these are cool as well. They're, they're amazing. Uh, electric scooters, I imagine those are quite popular here. <laughs> Very popular here. You can see here actually. So up there we've got like the server room, which is like the piece of art. Oh yeah. And then in here is like this is where the hardware is. Okay. That's it, that's Venturi. We've taken the windows off the Twizy because it is about a million degrees here. Um, but yeah, that was pretty cool. Look at you behind there. I, I wasn't the best on the simulator, but you know, I, I only got about three laps. So to get used to it, look straight from the simulator onto the actual Formula E start line grid, which is pretty cool. Anyways, now we need to go drive a Ferrari. Whoopee. We're arriving at Scuderia. Monte Carlo, I can already see the car that we are going to be driving. Ta-da! Alright guys, before we take the F8 right there, top down in the F8, which I'm going to tell you about in a little bit because it's got one super special option, which I'll, I'll tell you about. I want to show you the cars that are in here, uh, in, in the dealership right here. You can see Ferrari approved on these. They are beautiful. This is an 812 GTS in this really nice silver gray color with the metallic paint on the wheels as well, which is beautiful. Sports seats, Alcantara, leather. It's got the white Cavallino up there. Full carbon interior as well, really, really nice. It's actually got the carbon rear diffuser. SF90, we did a video on this, which will be linked around. And another F8, which also has carbon all over the place, around front. And it's really cool, red interior. I don't know if you can see that well with the diamond stitching, really nice. I'm actually excited to drive this with the top down. It's a beautiful day, perfect day for it. Let's get in the car. The F8. This is so cool. Belko is coming with me right here, photographer. I'm gonna put his Instagram on the screen right now. Amazing photographer. Look at this spec inside. Red stitching, leather, red Cavallino, carbon, carbon, carbon all over the place. This car is fully, fully specced and it's got that one option. But you know what's cool about this also is this car is for sale. So if you're in the market for an F8, uh, this is, this could be, I think it's one of the best on the market. So uh, yeah, contact the guys here and they'll sort you out. I don't know what the price is or anything, but they'll sort you out. Let's start it. All right, 
Okay, well, when you hop inside, it all feels pretty familiar because obviously it's that similar interior. They haven't changed anything particular on the interior apart from a few things. Now you need to be careful in town because this thing has a lot of power so you can very quickly be going too quickly but it's, uh, it's really nice. The new steering wheel I really like. Obviously it's Ferrari so you've got your indicators on the steering wheel, all that jazz. I've put it in, in manual mode. We're in sport mode right now. We'll go into race mode when we're out of town a little bit more. Visibility is really good. It's such a familiar platform now because obviously it's just been mainly updates rather than completely new model sounds good with the roof off sounds really good that view we've made it into race mode oh yes oh yes <laughs> yeah that video is gonna have me looking like an absolute dickhead with my camera on the on my head it's not a good look but it is what it is look at that beautiful Right, I'm getting kind of accustomed to the car. It is such a good car for this like French Riviera, living the you know French dream down here with the top-down Ferrari, beautiful color. And this spec is just outrageous. Everything you touch is either the, the highest grade leather or this beautiful carbon fiber. So the paddles, when you press on the paddles, oh by the way, the lift button's right there. When you press on the paddles, it's just such an amazing feeling. This, it's just so quality. It's hard to describe and it won't come across on video, but it's really, really nice. Now, this interior is obviously familiar. It's stayed true to itself in various iterations and been modernized a bit over the years from the 458 through to today. It will change soon. It will go down the SF90 Ferrari Roma route, which is, you know, full touchscreen on the steering wheel touchscreen down here for the climate control because this whole system right here is pretty dated but that's all going to change on the next generation which is going to be pretty different so now that this has all of these new filters that you need to have on cars it obviously has muted the engine a bit but it is we think the last oh very nice is this a mustang yeah nice mustang there very classy this is going to be the last ferrari of this type with a v8 potentially at least mass produced so that's why they called it apparently, uh, just told me, the Tributo. So that means, you know, in, in, in tribute to the mid-engine V8 Ferrari format, which has done so well over the years. So yeah, it's all gonna change. It's all gonna be modernized from the engine to even the interior, which, you know, it does the job, but it could do with a little bit of, um, of a revamp soon. Everything is kind of on the steering wheel, which does take some getting used to. So ooh, the brakes are pretty grabby, carbon ceramic brakes, you need to get used to them. But yeah, the, um, the steering wheel, so for example, when you want to like just, you know, give someone a sign with your headlights, it's down here, you press a button. Uh, when you want to put your indicators on, it's over here. So it does take a little bit of getting used to. You've got these two screens in front of you. Oh, these things are mountains. I'm going to put the lift up for these sweet bumps here because they are massive. So these two screens are controlled. So the right one is controlled through this button right here. So you can have your, your speedo up there in kind of an analog looking form. You can have your media, your radio, that's all done through this screen. And then if you want, you can change on this screen to have a bunch of different information. So from, for example, your tire pressures, your speedo as it is now in MIG, uh, you, you have a bunch of different options. So it's quite nice to be able to navigate through those two screens. The sat nav system, again, could do with a v revamp. It's a little bit outdated, but you do have Apple CarPlay if you plug your phone in down there. So that's quite nice. At least you've got Apple CarPlay and these new ones. That came in uh, on later 488s, I believe. But this car to drive is basically a usable, comfortable Pista. So it's got the, you know, the engine and the setup of the Pista. So 720 horsepower. So a lot, a lot of power from the twin turbocharged V8. The, the performance of this is absurd. 
Okay, so now that we've got the, um, there we go, we can change the screen there in front. Now that we've got the uh, lift down, that was blocking that earlier. What's this person doing? Cheeky little parking skills. But yeah, the power is outrageous. I mean, we're not going to be able to exploit it because we're on open roads, obviously. Um, so yeah, we're not going to be able to exploit it much, but the acceleration is insane. And what's so nice about it is... <laughs> It's not so recently I was driving around in a Hurricane and the Hurricane is really nice, but it's this nice feeling with this where the rear end, I mean, this is maybe my driving style more, but the rear end um, is playful. So you put your foot down and you need to control the car, especially in race mode. Whereas for example, in my Turbo or my R8 or even in the Hurricane, if you put your foot down and it just kind of goes, it's almost too easy. So this, you know, if you were to blast it, you get to the top of the road and you feel like, yeah, that's right, I did that. You know, not everyone could drive that road, I just did it. Whereas in the Turbo or the Hurricane, it's not, not really the case. But my feeling is with all these cars these days, they're all so good. You know, I've been lucky enough to drive, for example, the 720S, uh, the Turbo, uh, 992 even, the, the Hurricane, all these different cars. And it just comes down to your taste at the end. Back in the day, you know, I imagine in the 80s, whatever, you had some cars which are absolute dogs, which were really terrible to drive, and some which are fantastic. Today, they're all so complete, so good. It's just down to your taste. If you want something which is loud and flamboyant, you get the Lambo. If you're a Ferrari fan and you want something to be able to have some good time with to live this kind of Riviera dream, you get something like this. If you want to daily drive it, you get the turbo. If you want a super precise mechanical object of wizardry, you go and you get the, the 720S. Really nice Continental GT right there. That looked really good. So yeah, I really enjoyed actually kind of cruising around in this. I mean, Scuderia Monte Carlo is so nice, always lending me the latest latest cars we did the sf we did the the roma by the way we're in an area called saint jean cap ferrara right here which is beautiful some some of the most valuable houses in the world i think are are on this little peninsula we've actually got to go pick up a roma you're driving a roma so that's why we're driving over here which was here for a, for a video shoot but yeah i mean what what a complete package this car is really to be able to have acceleration we can maybe do a little acceleration here ready Yeah, it's nuts. You never really get used to the acceleration. It, it pushes your stomach back right into the back of the seat. So you have that acceleration, yet it's so usable. You put you put the um, the lift up and the car's basically in four by four mode. Uh, just the visibility is really good. It doesn't feel as big as the Lambo did, as wide. That had huge wing mirrors, which this doesn't have. Visibility is brilliant. Top down is just so nice to be able to have. And this one, which is for sale, it has this spec which is nuts. Now let's talk about the main key super expensive option is the Rosso Magma paint job, triple layer paint job on this car, which costs about 25,000 euros. That single option. So before you've even specced any of the carbon, which this car has every box ticked, before you spec any of that, you spent 25 grand on the paint job. I thought that was what I thought was pretty nuts of this one. So I wanted to share that with you guys as well because we've already done a couple of videos with F8s, but I thought sharing this spec, sharing this paint, and we got a couple close-up images. I mean, these houses around here are nuts. Yeah, yeah, the, just these fences are insane. Anyways, we've got a couple close-up images of the, uh, of the paint for you. Hopefully it does it justice because it is so beautiful, so deep, as I say, triple layer. Yeah, just uh, pretty amazing. But it's been a pretty cool day. We're now gonna arrive at a, at a really nice hotel. I'll show you guys and yeah what a dream I mean from the simulator this morning to driving this now going to this hotel driving around Cap Ferrara which is one of my favorite areas it's just so beautiful here yeah the all these houses I mean look at this this is all one property on the left and one property on the right outrageous so we just stopped in front of the Grand Hotel du Cap this hotel is called to take a photo but look at that in the sun how cool that looks the Rosso Magma unbelievable there's the interior for you. What a day this has been. And this is the hotel where they're filming a Netflix series called Emily in Paris. I don't know if you guys have watched it before, but they're filming it. I've now got a Harry Potter scar on my head from wearing this camera all day. But yeah, what a, what a car, what a day. Thank you Scuderia Monte Carlo, of course, as always. By the way, nice little carbon touch, boom. Carbon little uh, center caps, that's what you call them, yeah. Right there. I can show you a couple of the carbon options actually while we're here. Carbon there. 
carbon there, carbon here. Beautiful, awesome spec, and the carbon rear diffuser. See it right there. Anyways, that's that, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Scuderia Monte Carlo. Thank you, Balco. His photos, he's gonna take some awesome photos now. His Instagram will be below if you wanna see the photos. And uh, yeah, what a fun day. Subscribe if you aren't already. 60% of you watching this are not yet subscribed. So it would mean the world to me if you subscribe and we can go on more adventures like these. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.